Both abiotic and biotic factors are crucial in an ecosystem. Biotic means living. Think bio, biology, life. Abiotic, A means without, like asymmetry, without symmetry. So abiotic would be without life or non-living. Biotic or living factors are the organisms and the relationships between other organisms. So like this rabbit and its relationship with this fox or this rabbit and its relationship with the dandelion. All these are biotic factors. And abiotic or non-living factors include things like temperature, oxygen supply, sunlight, or the presence of water, um, soil type. All these are abiotic factors. These two factors work together to balance the ecosystem. Notice how when we talk about abiotic factors, we have to talk about ecosystems or higher levels of organization because levels of organization below ecosystems only deal with the biotic factors. So the abiotic environment supports organisms and organisms contribute to and modify the abiotic environment. Um, let me quickly summarize the relationships between organisms and water, sunlight, and oxygen supply. Three really important abiotic factors. So first, the presence of water is essential for all living things. That's pretty self-explanatory. Humans probably do the most to tamper with water. They displace, redirect, heat, use up water, and a great deal many other things, which can greatly change the surrounding ecosystem. For example, by building a dam, people slow down the flow of water in a river. This can cause flooding upstream and drying out downstream of the dam. Organisms unused to being swamped or dehydrated will immediately have a hard time adjusting. Some organisms die and drastically begin to change the ecosystem balance. As you can see, the presence of water, amount of water, placement of water are all really important. So sunlight is also really crucial and is the ultimate source of all energy. But different organisms can change the presence of sunlight. For example, a tall tree will provide shade. An entire forest would cover an entire area with shade. And therefore, there's a different amount of sunlight within the forest than outside the forest. And plants that live in the forest must either fight for the sunlight by growing taller or adapt to the shade at the bottom. The terrestrial um, and aquatic oxygen supplies, so here's terrestrial and this would be aquatic within the water, are also um, really crucial and can be altered. One of the biggest contributors to oxygen is plants. So particularly underwater, um, the more photosynthetic organisms there are in an area, the more oxygen there is concentrated in the area. So if you had like some type of seaweed or something, some type of photosynthetic organism living in the water, this side of the lake would have more oxygen than this side of the lake, which doesn't have plants. Um, pollution can also be a significant factor in influencing access to oxygen. For example, air pollution can make the intake of air dangerous and unhealthy. Um, like there's a correlation between increased asthma and respiratory diseases in human populations with the increase of factory air pollution. In aquatic environments, water pollution can lower the oxygen concentration and favor different types of organisms. Um, I'll save the nutrient cycles, which are also abiotic factors, for different videos, but they are also crucial and keep the ecosystem balanced.